welcome back to my channel so in this video I'm going to share with you guys 10 things that every girl and every guy needs to know about style just before I get started I am going to spotlight an app I've been trying out this app for the last week and I'm really really loving it um, seems like I'm really getting to the feel of trying out different apps and this is one of the ones I've been playing around with it's called style fruit it's a really great app to use to create outfits and also find out what other people think about your style style because you can do things like style checks like for instance I would just go on and I would say oh should I go for a black pair of heels or a white pair of heels and the community just votes and then it helps me as well so I decide well I'm gonna go for the black one or the white one depending on how the community votes you can also post your outfits on there so if you're not sure what you're going to wear for like a night out or a day out or a meeting or an interview you can post two different outfits and the community can vote or help you choose what outfit it's a great app to use also interact with other users because you can find inspiration on their profiles so if you go on my profile you see that I've already formed a couple of different outfits I find things I already have in my wardrobe or similar to things I have in my wardrobe and it helps me to plan my outfits as well and uh, just to see how everything looks together I'm gonna leave a link down below to where you can click through and download the app and make sure you follow me my name on there is Shirley B. Anyang as usual and I look forward to seeing you guys style checks as well as looks on to my 10 10 things and tips and tricks and a bunch of information you guys out there need to know about style so number one style is personal and what I mean by that is it's an expression of you know who you are and your interests and what you like and usually when you have style or you've developed your own style it's usually your way of speaking to the rest of the world because people can kind of form even in some cases judgments in other cases ideas or opinions about you based on you know how you dress or what you look like they can tell that if you were all white or if you were all black maybe you're into the minimal kind of trend if you were bright color then maybe you have a really bubbly really out there personality or you know these are just generalizations but what i'm saying about style being personal is it is an expression of your person and of who you are and there's going to be lots of people who would really, you know, gel with your style and love your style. And there's also lots of people who would be like, ooh, that's not quite me. Or, ooh, I do not like that, blah, 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 blah. But it doesn't matter because it's you and it's the way you want to express yourself in how you dress. Number two, let's say a, the denim shirt is trending and lots of designers have gone and created denim shirts. That's fashion, but with style and how you can make it timeless, it's the way that you decide to wear that denim shirt. Someone might decide, well, I'm just gonna wear it with just one button, or I'm gonna put the collar up, or I'm gonna roll my sleeves, or I'm gonna tie it. That is all down to the individual um, themselves. It's just how you wear it. Number three, you can develop your style by experimenting and documenting. And what I mean by that is, if you are in a position where you don't quite know what your style is, or you really wanna develop your style and you don't know where to begin, start off by trying out lots of different things, but then also documenting it by either taking photographs of yourself and storing it in a photo album on your computer or on your phone, or even go as far as creating a social media website, either an Instagram profile or a Twitter page, or even a blog, or in some cases, a YouTube channel. That's how I kind of developed my style. Um, I started my channel and my blog six years ago, and in the beginning, I wasn't quite sure how sort of like to express my style or what my style was, but it's over the years, as I was experimenting with different color, and I was experimenting with different styles and ways to wear things. I did a couple of DIYs um, over the years. And also I was documenting this because I would share it with the, I would share these things with you guys on my blog and on my YouTube. I realized the kind of things I'd like to wear and what I feel good in and what I think I look good in. So that's a good way to develop your style by experimenting and documenting. Number four is confidence in style. Sometimes I get questions and um, you know people asking me, oh Shirley, I want to look more feminine, I want to wear more clothes that make me feel like a woman, um, which clothes can I go and buy or what outfit can I put together and in most cases my response is always the same it, and it's, it's not just the garment itself, it's the way you wear it. So if you, you, a woman can look really womanly and really feminine and really sexy in a tuxedo and she can also look very sexy in a pencil skirt and a really nice crop top but it's all about the attitude and the confidence in wearing the garment. So if you do want to look more feminine and if you do want to look sexy, I know this sounds really cringy but 
practice poses in the mirror and practice the way that you look in the mirror. You can even go as far as practicing the way you walk, practicing the way you talk, practicing the way you kind of like your demeanor in essence, because that's all part of the package. It's not just the garment, it's not just the outfit. It's, um, you know, all of these things put together. Obviously for me, because I do lookbook videos and I'm, I'm constantly looking at myself in the mirror because I have to put these outfits together, I'm practicing. By doing these poses in my lookbooks and stuff, they, they kind of help me become a bit more flexible with myself and, you know, work in my angles and things like that. And, and also they, they've given me more confidence in the way that I look. So um, definitely bear that in mind when it comes to confidence and style. If you're, and this is just an example, obviously, and just in general, wearing outfits and just feeling the confidence and just having confidence of wearing the outfit. Number five, create regular style mood boards. And this is gonna serve as inspiration, just, you know, for you to experiment with different ways, because there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration and then turning it around and making it your own. And one of the things I really love to do is um, I have a Tumblr page and um, I always like read blog or post pictures of, you know, outfits and, you know, women that I really look up to and love the way they dress and the way they carry themselves. I look at that for, for inspiration. And sometimes I just take it and I turn it around and I make it my own thing. So um, mood boards are great. You don't have to just do them on Tumblr. There are amazing websites out there like Pinterest. You can pin so many different outfits and, you know, pictures of, you know, things that you are inspired by. You can create little mood boards on Photoshop and you can always do it the traditional way by getting a scrapbook and cutting out, you know, magazines, um, pictures, pictures from magazines and sticking them in. Number six, now this one might be a bit of a strange one, and that is taking pictures of people on the street that you are inspired by. So from their style to the way that they look to just in general. I personally love the streets for inspiration because you can just be walking down, you know, Oxford Street or Carnaby Street and you would just see someone that is impeccably dressed or if they've worn something in a particular way that really just inspires you. And in some cases, I used to do this a lot before and I've only just started doing it again is I just asked them for a picture and I say to them, I really love your outfit. Can I take a picture for my scrapbook? And most of them are really lovely about it and they say yes and I take a picture and I can always look back and think, oh, I loved that woman's outfit, I loved that guy's pair of shoes and it's just like really inspiring. So um, if you can whip out the camera, make sure you ask for permission though, you don't want to be taking pictures of people because, you know, in this day and age, people do get a bit worried about that kind of stuff having their images taken and you know blown in social media and stuff so make sure you do ask them the last three points are more to do with your shopping habits as well as your wardrobe um the first seven we talked about inspiration and documenting all that stuff but i do want to touch on those because it's really important um, so number seven my number seven point is um, organizing your wardrobe um, it's a very very good thing to do because it gives you an idea of what you have in your wardrobe and what you don't have in your wardrobe, what your wardrobe is lacking. And um, I personally love to organize my wardrobe in um, categories because it's really important to do this because that way you can form outfits easier. I have my trousers in one side and have my tops, my basics, my jackets, my knitwear and my shoes. I go around and I just, you know, organize my wardrobe a couple of different times a week. Sometimes it's, you know, kind of crazy how many times I do it, but. I like to keep it organized because like I said, it helps you see what you have. And then from there, you can actually draw up a list of things that you want to buy or you would like to buy. And then you can go out and you can shop for those things. So it's always good to keep your wardrobe organized. Um, I know sometimes it's hard in a busy world, especially you know if you've got work or if you've got a family, you don't have time to do it. But I'm telling you, try and organize your wardrobe. Um, three things to bear in mind when you're organizing your wardrobe, declutter regularly. Um, organize in categories and also make regular lists of things you want to try out and want to buy so yeah now this is leading on to my point number eight when you're going shopping make a list now I'm telling you to make a list sometimes I don't make a list but my shopping is usually more effective when I do make a list because I end up buying things I need rather than you know things I want or I perhaps already have or things I know for a fact I'll just buy and then I won't wear. So it's, that's why it's really important to have a list. And be very, very explicit about this list. So if you want black jeans with rips in the center and middle with a silver buckle or silver hardware, be as specific as you can so that when you do find it, you're buying it. I know it sounds strange. Why would you just write, just write black jeans? In fact, why would you make a list? But sometimes 
you you get so overwhelmed with shopping you can just go into a store and just be like there's just so much stuff but if you have a list that is really like down to the t what it is you're more likely to find what you need i would definitely say when you're going shopping make a list number nine is shopping for vintage pieces this is something that everybody who wants to develop a personal style should do because not only because of this but mainly because of this when you do go vintage shopping you're more likely to find things that are unique and you won't find anywhere else and that way you can really individualize your style so like for instance i know that we can all go into zara and really like fall in love with a jacket and like you know 300,000 people have that same jacket, which is great. We can all be in a group and enjoy it. But if you want to individualize the style, vintage shopping is the way to go. There's so many amazing vintage stores in and around London, and I'm sure there's so many charity stores in so many different areas where everybody lives. So take a trip one day and just go have a browse, look for you know pieces that you think really speak to you and your personal style. And chances are that you'd probably be the only person in your town rocking that which is kind of cool because it becomes even more personal to you and your style. Number 10, my last and most important thing is to have fun with it. Style is an expression of yourself. Don't take it too, too seriously. Have fun with it, express yourself. You know, if people compliment you, take it and say thank you. If people have, you know, something nasty or negative to say, still say thank you and keep it moving, you know, but just enjoy yourself and have fun with it. So that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you soon in my next one. Make sure you check out the Style Fruits app because that's another great app to help you document your style and plan your outfits and shopping in advance. And I will see you soon. Bye.